Welcome to the Dropping a Coil Show. This is Flash, and we got Larry Woods and Rob Works just waiting to tell you the interesting stuff that's going on. And uh, the usual gr uh, Grimner, appreciate the place to play. And for your chatting extravaganza, you have your bots and bodies. Barman Grimner, Moose Girl Kate Anti, Asmo Chelsea Circlo, Rohan, Dan Van Meter, Me, Graham Z, Jay's Nines, Jay's, Meister Brow, Prince, Rob Works the Bubbler, Trust No One, uh, Vanna White, Weather Dork the Phantom, CC66, Chloe, Cyborg Noodle, Ensiv, Frumpy Kiss, Lurky Seven, Matt WJ2002, Push a Pencil, Ponsas, Smartass, and the Holiest Roger. And take it away, Larry. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, got some good news for today. Uh, nothing is settled yet, but it looks like we probably have a pilot project. Uh, that means we pick it up from under the horse's tail and pile it behind the barn. Uh -huh. well, at least we've got good work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they've they've uh, acknowledged this for what we can do and uh, are on board with the project, but they want to see it done in real life before they can submit to the entire 15,000-acre solar farm. Uh -huh. So what we're going to do is go to a village in the forest, in the jungle, that does not have any power whatsoever, wire the buildings, put up our system, and give them free energy. It's not free, but... It will be free to them. So top. Right. So that's that's the general idea. Um, okay. I had a feeling that would be something that would come about. Yeah, it, and we can't expect them to just jump in with both feet on this without knowing what we can actually well, do. Obviously, yeah. And we've got some cosmetic work to do, but all the circuits are figured out. All the coils are figured out. We're going to make the coils on site. They're going to make the coils on site. Uh, we'll go over there first for a couple of weeks to teach the teachers how to teach the class how to make the coils. Uh, have two or three different groups, uh, four different groups, one for each coil, mm -hmm. uh, and go from there. So, yeah, we'll go over for a couple of weeks and come back and then go over again and get them started and start supervising the, the housing. Mm -hmm. And once we get the poles up, start placing the boxes, the houses have power right then. Don't have to yep. wait for the power company to come and hook them up. <laughs> no, it's, it's live. Yeah. Transmission line has only got to be as high as from one house to the next. So that's a little bitty wire to transmit that energy to just to get the next coil going. So right. once it gets started, the capacitance is in the system. Uh, we can, after, after six houses, we can put up a gas station and power it with three-phase power. Right. So everything's ready. It's setting. Uh, so this, the, the village is going to have... Uh, more than six houses, evidently, or I, I would assume. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll go into a, a village with 20 or 30 houses and do each one of them. So you'll have... That'll be... If we get if we get 30 houses, yeah, that'll be enough for large industry. That's five, five yeah. grains. Yeah. They can put up a manufacturing plant of some sort, a refrigeration plant, ice plant... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it'll be in a tropical country, so maybe an ice plant would be a good idea. I don't know. But we yeah. can do that with with water and fire, with water and, and no fire, with water and an electrical coil with an iron pipe around it. 
Yeah. That gives you the heat on one end and the cold on the other. Or you can have instant hot water and instant cold water at your faucet. It's just so fan, uh, fascinating. All of the different applications of this thing is it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the big flat wound coil with the same amount of wire on it, if you were to put that on a toroid, on a standard toroidal coil, it's just wrapped round and round. Uh, the standard coil puts out a 4,000 milligauss magnetic field. Our coil with the same amount of wire on it puts out 18,000 milligauss. So that increased magnetic field will be more than enough to, to make that iron pipe around the copper water pipe glow red, and that's your instant hot. Right. And it, it's just like a, a chlorine or an ammonia system for cooling. That instant hot will give you the cool that you need on the other end of it. Right. Oh, we don't have to worry about the pipes freezing up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see it all in action, man. It's going to be an interesting project. I'm enthused. I'm excited. Uh, Likewise. I was actually kind of hoping y'all would do something over here first. You know, because well, like, you know, you don't want to travel. What? How did that work out? Did you tell them you're not going until this stuff is over? Oh, well, yeah, they don't expect us to come over there until you can fly from one country to the next without being quarantined. Right. And I ain't about to wear a mask in the airplane from one country to the next. That's bullshit. Dude, I had to do that on a Greyhound bus for two days just recently. And it's like, it's like no one, no one takes it seriously, and they just take it off anyway. And oh, you can take it off when you eat. And it's like, well, obviously you need to eat. You can't just wear a fucking mask all day. <laughs> so it's like, what's what's the point? If you want to wear one, wear one. If you if you don't, you're not. The, the people are protected who wear them anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for it, what? I have an article in my back. <laughs> that while the WHO and the CDC were both declaring that this was basically a non-lethal virus unless you're old and, com and compromised and shit, uh, Janet Mills and, like, 16 other governors were shutting down their states for what was being declared basically a flu. Yeah. And it's all in yeah. real print. That's, that's the Portland Press-Herald. That's uh, the Portsmouth new newspapers. Like, it's real shit. It's not even fucking conspiracy theory, dude. Right. For everybody wondering who's talking, uh, this is our guest. Fox, he's he's a uh, anonymous uh, reporter, uh, radio host as well. I uh, I travel from coast to coast. I live in tents. Uh, not homeless. I actually choose to do that because it's a lot easier than renting hotels. And obviously, you don't really want to <laughs> go to a hotel with the shit going on. I mean, this is the best time to live off the grid. I've been preparing to do it for about a decade because I knew eventually this kind of shit would happen. Well, a lot of us did so. Here I am, doing it. It's uh, the apocalypse. Woo! <laughs> Government's taking over, bro. That's it. So, um... Oh, bro, I smoke a shit ton of weed, so... I oh, that a little. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, so that's Fox, everybody. Uh... Uh, a guest of Larry has come to see him there in Missouri, evidently, since they were out a while in Missouri there. So, My Marie. website is Anonymous Radio Redux, R-E-D-U-X. And uh, I actually came from uh, Boston to come and see Larry. Dot com? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, wor uh, WordPress. It's a WordPress site that's a free one, so it has the WordPress in it. So it's like WordPress. Mm -hmm. WordPress.com. Okay, Anonymous. Radio Redux dot WordPress dot com. There's a bunch of random shit. I mean, it's a freebie. It's non-profit. I mean, yeah, yeah. Fun, but it's not like I'm, I'm. I'm not like a conspiracy tryhard. I really am just trying to get info out there. Right. I'll post that. I'm the conspiracy nut. <laughs> oh well, you're right on here. 
Now, if every everything we're doing is a conspiracy, it's all a conspiracy to end the oil companies, end the fossil fuel. Hell yeah. End the old power plants. Also, there you go. I posted your uh, link there in the chat room. Um, are you in the chat, Larry? I don't see you. No, I have an open chat yet. Oh, okay. All right. Um, if you want to do that, then people can ask you all questions directly. Um, so, uh, well, there you have it. Uh, we're going to do a, a, a model village of hopefully 30 homes. So, uh, explain this poll to, to me a little more. This uh, You brought it up the last time, and I didn't really get into it, but it's the first time you've talked about something on a poll, like a light pole, I'm assuming, okay, or a yeah. telephone pole, with okay. four coils on the top. You, you've never explained that to us. Yeah, it... It takes a load to make these things work. Right. It won't do anything at all without a load. But once you get that load on it, that fills the capacitors in the system and it starts generating. <coughs> so the the system that we'll have, and they'll, every one of them will be the same. If you need more power, we will simply add one more load coil to the to the system. So uh, you put your four coils in the box, and you hook them up, and take the wires out of them, and they go to the panel in the house, and that gives you your power. And one load, one one pole, will handle two houses. It puts out that much power. Uh, we'll be putting out about 400 amps. So that's more than enough to run two houses in a village. So you've come up with a whole new configuration based on what you're telling me with four coils putting out 400 amps. Yeah. Yeah, the first the first switching coil, the component coil that we put on is a four times multiplier. Okay. And each uh, load coil that you put on is a ten times amplifier. So if we've got so you've got three of your normal coils. That's your three legs of your of your three phase output, and then your driver and then your driver coil with the hallback array in the middle. Yeah, which, which you which you've turned into this four times. Uh, yeah, the, the switching multiplies the amperage four times. We put okay. it through a load coil, and that amp that multiplies that four times ten. That's forty. Right, and and then we put that through another load coil, and that's ten times the forty, which is four hundred. So you're getting four hundred amps out of would be five coils in that. At what voltage? At what voltage? Uh, that could either be one ten, two twenty, or four sixty. Okay. Depending upon the load, for the industrial load that'll be 460. For the home loads that'll be 110, 220. Right. Well, so we we got a system that'll work, and it'll work for anything with exactly the same module. If you need more power, just add another coil. So there's no particular reason to put it up on a pole other than just to have it up out accessible to two houses. To, to, begin, to begin with, it'll be on the pole because you get 50 volts per meter as you get farther away from the earth. Okay. So that'll boost up the voltage initially. So it's also an earth ground battery. Yeah, absolutely. It's an, earth, it's an earth battery. Exactly an earth battery. It's a jewel thief on an earth battery, period. That's all it is. Okay. But you're still running the driver coil uh, with the haulback array in it, too. Yeah, the haulback will give you 12 volts to get the whole thing started, and that will start the LED light, and the LED light will provide the constant load that it needs so that it continues to operate. 
Gotcha. Yeah. Super, super, super simple. Because I'm simple-minded. <laughs> I mean, I, it, you're a genius if this all works, man. Uh, it works, I'll guarantee it. I mean, not not that I'm questioning it. I just, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't know what you know. <laughs> I don't understand it like you do. I don't know what I know most of the time. People ask me questions and it just comes out. <laughs> I'm a wealth of knowledge. It's just most of it's incorrect. <laughs> well, yeah. I know lots of people that way. <laughs> so, well, that's exciting. Um, well, that went fast. We got... Uh, an hour and 45 minutes to kill you. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to mine. <laughs> okay. Well, what else, you know, um, now, uh, are you going to, you're going to keep doing uh, what you were doing before with the group and everything while you're doing this? Oh, yeah. I assume. Oh, yeah. Uh, the R&D group, man, listen, I'm the dummy in that group. Everybody in that group, in their field, is... Just excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Uh, we've got the 3D printer guy. We've got the, the Texas Instrument guy. We've got an aero mechanic. We've got a Cambridge professor, or, well, a Cambridge guy. Uh, we've got a professional teacher. We've got a finance person. We've got somebody that's good with graphics. We've got somebody that's good with with. Got all you got the team man. outside. Yeah, got the dream team going on. Yeah. So, Larry, d does this eliminate the Monday meeting report? Uh, no, that'll be carrying oh, okay. on because Monday meetings will will continue. Yeah, but uh, do you have one for us today, or are we gonna not? Uh, yeah, uh, Monday meeting report for today is I was so tied up with all the other stuff. Uh, <laughs> they, the uh, the guy that got a thousand amps uh, out of frequency and high voltage, uh, he's changing his circuit to go with our circuit, and it, it's going to boost up his output a bunch. But I don't want to <laughs> use high frequency to do this. The high frequency means that we've got to have a component in there to generate that frequency. And I just I just don't want to add extra components. It's not worth it to me. Yeah. That's more cost than things to go wrong, and I don't want things to go wrong. Hey, that's uh, the best way. Less less things to break the better. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to be in the replacement parts business, right? We, we want it to last for the rest of your lifetime, at least. <laughs> and that's not free energy, and it's not perpetual motion. It is energy at a very, very low cost. Yeah, it's just tapping into here to here yeah. before untapped energy. Yeah. And if we go into if we go into an industry with that, we have one of our boxes at every single machine, every single workstation. Yeah. That just adds more power for them, it's extra power for them to sell, and it's extra capacitance. That's, that's, for that's the amazing thing of it. The the more load you have, the more power it generates. Yeah. So I mean <laughs> Adding more stuff is, is is a bonus, not a not a, an expense. Yeah, adding more stuff makes your dividend check at the end of the month bigger. That's crazy. Leave your lights on. I don't care. Well, I must say, Rob, it's a good thing we live in a sane world today. <laughs> yeah. So I don't yeah. think what Larry is saying is crazy. I think oh, no, I mean, it's not it's crazy. crazy. Oh, but it's crazy. It's opposite of what we've been indoctrinated. It's what we do. We yeah, this is technology we should have had for a hundred years. We've been 
lied. Deprived of advances that could have been, uh, you know, well, we've been over all this. The, the yeah. things we yeah. can have right now. We could be living in a floating city right now. Yeah, we could, we mm. could have, you know, Star Trek, Jetsons, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> well, you know, not the universe. Not suspended. I mean, I've seen demonstrations of, like, suspended magnets, and if you... I mean, I'm not, like, saying you can plant the whole city. I think you could, but you need a lot of fucking magnetism, but think about how, like, I don't know, like, UFOs and shit work. Like, maybe they're just flying on the Earth's magnetic fields or whatever, if there's UFOs. You know, I mean, I may, I may have seen one once, I think. Yeah? All right, good conversation. How you doing? <coughs> Yeah, we can we can float a magnetic bearing. That means that now magnetically you can have a seat in your car that don't bounce. Uh, it's just you know take the take the road frequency out of your driving and just have a seat that floats there. Yeah, I can see that. You can. What does it look like? I can. <laughs> a, a ring magnet that's that's magnetized to the North Pole on the inside of the ring, and then a cylinder magnet that's magnified that's magnetized to the North Pole, and all you do is put the cylinder magnet inside the ring magnet, and the cylinder magnet floats, and you cannot push it to the sides of the bearing. That's a magnetic bearing. That's a floating shaft. Inside of a ring of, of magnets. And you just put a seat on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> Let us decipher reality. That's what I want to do. Why not just float the entire car? Yeah. Well, what I've seen here in, in the town when I go sit and have my beers in the daytime, these kids have these new fangled scooters. Oh, God. What ones? The ones with two wheels that you lean forward on and pray to fucking God you don't hit No, them. no, no. They're, it's like a Segway uh, without a stick. Two-wheeled, regular two-wheeled scooter, but there's some kind of power source. Looks electric to me. They don't pedal anything, but they push a button or whatnot, and, zip, and they got some speed to them, too. And these kids are zipping around this. Oh, they're just talking about a little motorized motor scooter. Yeah. Well, they're zipping around a crowded place where people are walking, not hitting anybody, but going a little too quick. So yeah. we kind of have the future in a way. <laughs> well, there's different things. Yeah, the, the hoverboard that you saw on Back to the Future, that that's reality now. Yeah. They have those. It's 2020, it should be, I'm telling you. Yeah. Well, yeah. And in the meantime, the, we the people are fighting over, you know, whether to wear a mask or not. <laughs> but, oh, man, dude. I wasn't even allowed in South Station bus terminal back in B-Town without a mask. The guards would keep coming up to me and interrogating me. I'm like, like, yeah, we, we, we could go on and on about that, but, you, you know, we're all angry about it. Anyone with half a brain is probably fucking mad about it. Well, Grim says the Razor scooters, and I don't, I don't really know. I'll, I'll do a little asking and see what they are. But I've just noticed them like the last couple of weeks. These kids, the young kids, young teenagers, motorized scooters, yeah, yeah. But they're not gas powered, and they're not uh, pedal powered. It's something different. It's new. Yeah, and they're fast uh, as fuck. Electric scooters. I was gonna get one on Amazon for like four hundred bucks. But okay. then I left Maine and decided to travel and not on a scooter, although that's a cool idea. <laughs> yeah, you have to, to, to charge them. Yeah, and like, how yeah, long does your heart last in those things? Like, could you just, like, plug in, charge, and go a few hundred miles if you have to replace Oh, I doubt it would go any more, uh, 100 miles. See, I, I could just ask somebody where they got there and find out on the internet. You can buy them at Walmart. We don't have Walmart. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, Walmart wouldn't survive in this country. There they are. Here's the company uh, website. Because the they would have to pay their uh, employees a, a living wage, and they Walmart doesn't do that. 
There, I posted the link for you. For me? Yeah. Oh. Where okay. do you live? You want it in the notes or what? Denmark. No, I, uh, I don't care. Oh. I'm way out here up on the on the uh, on the coast of one of the islands. What does it take to become a permanent resident? Because uh, I am looking at moving out of the country. As oh well. fuck! Like, it was it was a fluke. I met a woman, and we we figured if we got married, the legal shit would be a less of a problem. So we did that. Oh, so I just need to find some uh, some some hot Scandinavian just just pair to you know. No, I'm. This is what happened. I I don't know. I, if she would have lived in Nebraska, I'd be in America <laughs> right now. It's just the way it went. Geographic. But, anyway, <laughs> but yeah, probably. Uh, right now, I just say, is if you got a passport, use it. Get on a freighter. Get the fuck out of the states. Yeah, but, dude. I mean, the borders here aren't meant to keep people out. They're meant. To keep people <laughs> yeah. 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 You can't get on a uh, anything that's uh, seaworthy to go out to the ocean without a passport. Unless, of course, what you're traveling on is illegal already. I mean, if it's a legal thing, they'll want you to go register with the passport folks. Yeah. Because if you get stopped in international water and you got no paper, guess what they do? <laughs> you're stateless. They kidnap your ass and put you in a fucking jail cell until they figure out who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In different countries, man. some countries yeah. are kind and some countries are yeah. barbaric. Some of them will bury you under the jail. Take me to bury you in a, in, a, in a box and forget about you. Okay, you know, guys, I interrupted that little bit and I called it Larry, Rob, Flash, and Fox Decipher Reality. <laughs> so I was, I was going to say, is there anything else going on or is there any link that anybody's interested we could actually have it? Little chatter about, about on this dropping a coil podcast. I like that electric scooter. Ah, yeah. yeah. Hit Larry, hit Larry. Strap a coil on that thing, then you can go for hundreds of miles. Yeah, it looks <laughs> looks like yeah, it looks like something that we could replace a couple of coils with. It's just a battery pack under the standing deck. Yeah, <laughs> and the wheels start turning. <laughs> Oh, just coils in there and go with it. Right. <laughs> yeah, that could be a real quick product. I still well, I think it. I think the technical the technological age has hit even the you know I'm in rural Denmark so but it's heavy here. But yet every now and again I'll see somebody in a push wheelchair, not a not an electric one. Because some people don't want the electric one, and some people do. Yeah. Right. Well, there's still the illusion of choice here, so it's it's a softer ride than well, where I'm from. A self-powered electric chair that you don't have the problems with the batteries and use military-grade connectors on them so that your wire connections don't break all the time. No, I meant arm power. They just want to... I run into this guy at the grocery. He rolls in in a wheelchair. And it's like a specifically designed for him to roll around like that in places. Yeah. It's not a big, clumsy it's, machine. It's, yeah. just, it's tighter. Yeah. yeah. So I assume yeah, he does that. Like slanted that. Wheels on. That's like a, a sports chair. It's the kind they use to play basketball and stuff. Right. So, well, I guess what I'm getting at, Rob, is they haven't sold everybody because of their age or any of that. Some people yeah. still prefer old-fashioned shit here. Yeah. So there's this weird balance I get to enjoy because <laughs> Cirque don't have it in the city. She says people are already on masks and worried about the flu and eh. Yeah. Wah. Yeah. But there's a, there's a way around it. So it's not like it, they don't do anything on a mandatory scale here. It's all for the benefit of your friends and others. You know? Yeah. Well, so they guilt them into it, like yeah. This stuff, you but know? it's a suggestion, not an order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Th then you just feel bad when you break the rules and you feel yeah. ashamed and all that. Well, you get that uh, peer pressure thing going on too. 
Or you stay after work and you go have a drink with your friends, wait till the fucking traffic dies down and come home late. Yeah. Fuck it. Oh, the poor kid, man. I'd be, and it was like 75 degrees today. I said 75 degrees to get today, guys. Okay, that sounds nice to me. Outside. Yeah. <laughs> Must be talking Celsius, then it's bacon. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a little humid, though. So it feels warmer. When you're doing yeah. stuff, if you're just sitting on your ass, it's really nice. But if you're out doing stuff and you're not used to the humidity, whew, yeah, wow. It's, it's been really nice here lately, too. 85 here right now. Wow. And you're in Arkansas. Yeah. yeah. But it's a nice in the closed location in the United States somewhere. Yeah, we're still having a cold front here, and it hadn't got to 80 yet. Mm-hmm. Nice. 70. Wow. Well, beautiful really weather. Lately. Holy shit. Well, I was a teenager before I first really lived in snow. I mean, late teens, too, not young old teens. I would hitchhike around the United States and never but always do it when the weather was nice. <laughs> I wasn't into that cold shit. I heard that. Yeah. Yeah, the, Cal- the cold shit in New Hampshire for like oh. two months and living in a tent just to see if I could do it and it sucked balls, dog. Like, yeah, I feel mm-hmm. that. Yeah. How's yeah. your immune system? Right. What do you What do you do for to survive all the weather and all the hoopla out there? The virus well, I just check shit. what's coming. I get my waterproof tent, and I know when to set up, when to come, when to go, and what to eat. I don't eat meat. I stay away from as much dairy as possible. I take vitamins, and I exercise. I mean, when you're out here, yeah. you kind of trip. There's life trip, and there's the death trip. If you're, like, drinking and partying and shit, it's going to be <laughs> you. But if you're using it as a form of exercise, then every day you just get stronger. Ah, cool. That was, yeah, well, I'm, I'm like, balance the, or I walk the razor's edge with all that. I have too. Recently, I have kind of like slowed down to like nothing. But me and I, well, I, I got trapped for each fucking trash last night. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> ah, fine. Hey, I'm sorry. I've been waiting years to meet you. Let's get fucked up first of all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it a little time to celebrate. It's a time for it. Yeah. And then Fox was introduced to RLM through Vinny. Oh uh, yeah, I think so. Like four or five years ago, I think he made me an editor on your page. No, it's not my page. I'm, I'm just on the RLM page. That's Grimner. Uh, yeah, that would be Grim. Right on. Yeah, I like what you guys do. You're very unique. It's not like you're trying to be something you're not. Like, you're not trying to sell shit. Most of them are trying to, like, yeah. make their way to that point, and they all just, like, got so corrupt and mentally effed, so... No, it's you guys, just, you just kick back, smoke blunts, and talk about whatever's going on in the world now. <laughs> yeah, just an open platform, pretty much, yeah. That's what we do with Anonymous. I don't have any scripts or rules. Like, I'll script my own shows just so I remember what I'm talking about, but most of the time I just bring people off the yeah. street. Like, well, some of my guests have even been homeless. Like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't think anybody here scripts anything. That, uh, they may do, prep a list of things to talk about, but that's about it, yeah. Yeah, I do all my different stuff. shows have different themes. Like our show is obviously dropping a coral with Larry, and uh, we talk about alternative energy and things like that generally. But we talk about just about anything. You guys have like a genuine like broadcaster platform, like LPFM, Pirate Radio, GMRS transmitters, or Ham Radio. Or are you guys just doing this on the internet? Yeah, it's all podcast stuff. Uh, oh sweet, I do a mixture of both, but I prefer the internet. YouTube, but shoot. Yep. And uh Bosscast I think is our actually who we're broadcasting through right now. Anyways. Yeah, it's just a it's just a podcast. Hey, what's up, With Cyborg Noodle? Love your screen name. <laughs> That's a bot. That's a bot, actually. The guy uh is not here right now. Sock, uh, sock puppet owns that, that bot. 
they have been around for a while. Bots and bodies because yeah. some of the bots. Yeah, there's, there's, there's like, like five or six bots in here that are scripts. And and some of the people seem like they're bots. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, no. but, uh, hey, I'm all for diversity, fuckers. <laughs> I can't be a boss. You cast. want two masks with that chocolate shake, sir? <laughs> I swear yeah. the world. So, because the that's what we well, do. Fox doesn't know. Probably doesn't know the shows that are nothing that we do over here. But I'm in Denmark, where everything that you probably read about in America about Denmark is the exact opposite of what's real about Denmark. <laughs> Same with every other country in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. Unless it's from from bullshit. Uh, unless you do um, commerce. And then it's just all shit for everybody. Taxes and all that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, tariffs and taxes and rules and regulations. There you have it. And how many countries are there, Larry? Like 175? Close to 200. Yeah, yeah pile. I don't know how many. Oh, I thought you might. The, 2000, the 2006 count was 186, but I recall there being 216. At one time, yeah, but it's been dwind- they've been gobbling them up over the years behind their backs to change maps. Grimm's the Jews didn't do it, but the Jews. Up says one ninety seven. That's to keep the map so. people in business always having to make a new map. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Anyways, do you guys do you guys do anything with any of this metals finance? Does it interest you, or do you have anything to say about it? You know, buying metals, precious metals. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's always yeah. I, I don't. I'm a poor, poor guy. I don't do these things. But okay. there's lots of people on the radio with us that do. So I thought I might bring it up as a topic. Well, yeah. Uh, precious metals and gold is up almost two thousand, if not over it right now. Uh, it hasn't been that high since two thousand and nine, I think. Many, many years. Well, it's 2058 right now. Is it? Excellent. It's gone up since I looked at it last. And uh, silver is 2838. That's a good thing. That means that the fiat currency is getting worth less. The petrodollar is worth less now. This is pushing the world into the gold standard or into the precious metal standard. I hope so. Yeah, I really think it is. Uh, which is a good thing. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of countries have been stocking up on, on the gold. China yeah. and Russia both uh, have been stockpiling big time. My suggestion for anybody that wants to get into it, buy junk silver. Then you'll get a bag of dimes, but there'll be silver dimes. Yeah. And in in the old days when it was real then 10 dimes, 10 silver dimes would make a silver dollar. And 10 silver dollars would make a gold dollar. 20. 20, yeah, 20. So that means 20 to 1 on on gold and silver, and it's way below that now. So silver, when gold finally goes way up, silver is going to skyrocket. Yeah, if the ratio goes back to twenty to one, we're it would be uh, it's at seventy five to eighty to one right now. Mm-hmm. So if it went there, it would uh, quadruple in value. If it went down to twenty to one, yeah. So we'd have hundred dollar an ounce of silver. <laughs> yeah. If it just went, if gold didn't move at all, and silver just went to its original ratio of twenty to one. So we'd all get rich out of that. All of us that are holding silver. Yeah. Last time it turned from, uh, last time it went over $2,000, I sold all the gold or most of the gold that I had and bought junk silver. Yeah, I would have actually disagree with that. I would say uh, get bullion. Um, bullion is harder to exchange. Yeah, than, for now. Yeah, yeah, for now. When they go to the standard, it probably won't be. Yeah. I I don't want, personally, this is just my personal feelings on it, 
I don't want anything with a government stamp on it. That's a good idea. Because uh, governments have a tendency to say, that's got my name on it, so that's mine. Mm-hmm. So give it up. They like to do that. So um, I don't know. That's just my personal feeling on it. That's a good idea. So, what do you think, Flash? Hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, government minted silver or privately minted silver? Me? Yeah. What? You're, you're the Jew here. Come on. Oh, <clears throat> Wow, government! I'm going to make way more profit off off of anything that's stamped government than if it's private. So where do you go with that? My people are just greedy, but we love you a little bit. <laughs> just not much. Don't get too carried away with yourself. Yeah, as long as, as long as we're working our asses off for you. It's the sad truth about my people. They're just disgusting. <clears throat> if you don't believe me, go work for one for a couple of hours and see how you like it. <laughs> Whoa, silver never gets respect. Oh, please. Here we go with all that rubbish nonsense talk about <laughs> some people that don't have any money any fucking way. Christ. <laughs> so I'll make believe, everybody. I mean, I, I understand we're live and we're paying bills and all this bullshit. But this is no more real to me than an episode of Bowwinkle and Rocky. Of course, I'm the conspiracy nut. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that lives in Denmark and doesn't go to America, so I should be quiet. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I've got no right to have an opinion. I don't live there anymore. <laughs> I've been told that by relatives. <laughs> oh, sure. When I was in Scotland, my cousin, she got mad at me and she said, she said that. Went, wow. Your opinion is probably better that's what you're like not trapped <laughs> here and you can actually think separate from the, you know, like chaos of being here. Yeah, it was it was a light squeeze in twenty eleven that in the last nine years seems to have turned into a full boot right on the side of your face. And I'm watching it. It just really is upsetting beyond words to see where I'm from turn into what it's become. It's uh, yeah. You know, and then the horrible shit people say about where I live isn't true. It's kind of nice here. But where I'm from, it's got all this great reputation, and people want to go there. And you go there, and it's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, I saw it change, man. It was horrible. Yeah. So, yeah, not yeah, like even, even like it. where I'm at right now, uh, you wouldn't really, other than the people running around with muzzles on, you wouldn't know anything was going on. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Muzzles. I've been calling them that for months. <laughs> <laughs> Guys are mean. <laughs> well, it's wow. what it is. Effectively. It's I muzzle. know. I know. I know, I know. But, you know, Cirque, Cirque is uh, Danish. Yeah. And... Whatever the government is going to demand of her in the end, she's going to go along with it because she doesn't like to uh, rock the boat. I don't know. Yeah, pretty much. She'll comply just to shut people up on a train so it's not a big mess for everybody yelling at her. Yeah, go along to get along. So, yeah, well, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, know, I, I give a rat. I, I, I have the same exact situation. So, yeah, so, so yeah. We, we, our... Uh, Wow, so the situation has just worked out. I'm in paradise, and I don't have to travel anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's wow. always nice. <laughs> to not have this, to corona, out. this corona, it has just ruined my life, corona. <laughs> <laughs> it would have if I'd have been in L.A. or maybe Chicago or New York. But I've not lived in Chicago, so I'm guessing. Corona is now the most popular new baby's name. <laughs> Corona. <laughs> People are naming their kid. Wow, what a horrible name to have. Don't worry too hard, Claude. Wow. 
<laughs> She's such a bitch. Here, babies. <laughs> Here. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how could you not? How could you not just be glad she leaves? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, back to the show, folks. <laughs> what is on? What is on the propaganda list for the show? What do we got? Uh, you know, we we've, we've done free energy. You've explained to the world on a radio program pretty much how to rig up your own free electric. <laughs> Or at least that it can be I done. I hope, yeah, I hope there's people out there that pursue it to a, a, a result. There's a lot of people that are. I mean, it, it's coming. It's coming out one way or another. Yep. Um, they're not yep. going to be able to keep the lid on it. But no, and you with people program. like Larry making, making deals with countries. I mean, <laughs> big deals. Right. I mean, you if start out things, small and you work up. Yeah. Well, yeah, once... It, once once he proves that he can do it, I think the the floodgates are going to open and they're going to... Yeah, once Biden's sitting in the White House in January, there's going to be no more um, lockdowns or hold-ems. They, they'll get what they want. And they'll give us back our freedom. Uh, yeah, so if you can afford, if, if indeed you can afford to live at that at that price range at the yeah. time I'm talking about. Because you'll be able to fly, it's just you won't be able to afford to fly. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> The six companies are just locking everything up. So if you want something, you got to go to them. <laughs> but we have a pandemic. <laughs> They've effectively put all small businesses out of business now. Fuck them all in a in couple of months. Boom. With, yeah. with the compliance yeah. of the masses. like it was Part of the Agenda 21, they want to have control over the resources, and they've used capitalism to do it over the course of three generations. And places like Walmart have been getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And now, all right, fuck everybody else. Walmart's in control. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, they're, they're calling it capitalism. It's not capitalism, but that's what they're calling it, so they can demonize well, it. It was definitely bred by some form of capitalism and some form of communism and government intervention and military complexes. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you, you can't take one piece of the puzzle and, and, and isolate it out there and you really throw can't. it out there by there's itself. The idea that the planet is, in fact, like, I don't know, there's a lot of resources, but let's be real, a lot of shit's dying, and the government's going to use the fucksness of it all to take control yeah. of everything. That's the thing. All the scarceness, scarcity is is manufactured. It's We should be living in abundance, and there's no reason not to. Yeah, it's all manufactured scarcity. Yeah. You ever seen the movie uh, Snowpiercer? Huh. Mm -mm. It's kind of like that. In no. the end, everybody was okay. The planet had already stopped being cold. The, the people were just keeping them on that train for fun, bro. Yeah, I didn't see it, so... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a movie watcher, really. Um, but, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, then there's and it's not capitalism, it's corporatism, aka fascism. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean what, why does it matter so much what, what it's called and not yeah, what, exactly what it is doesn't matter. It's when the government merges with the business and the military and No, uh, I'm not I'm not asking what is it. I'm saying why does it matter so much what you call it because those as are compared to what it is. Because what it is is what you call it. I mean, would you call mm. a rock a fruit? I could. Then people would think I was nuts. <laughs> Wait, they already do that, so. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think it would matter. I'm kind of in a room all by myself here, Fox. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, yeah, the label's not as important as the fact of <laughs> we're getting fucked. And yeah, uh, see, that's what I actually don't fuck. get. Yeah, it's like permanent fucksiness until everything reverts back. Yeah. And but they always the one complaining is always bitching about the other opposition fucking them, and then when their side's in power, they're all of a sudden they're not being fucked by the people that are fucking everybody. Yeah, else. fucking they things the right. other ones were doing. Yeah, it's all right. It's all about how the government and the elites and powers that be manufacture a left-right bullshit scheme just to keep them all fighting until they get what they want. Yeah. yeah, over here they got like 14. Maybe when it comes to spending that money, it's, it's, uh, they're all, it's all partisan politics then. When they want to raise, or they want to go blow somebody up over in the east somewhere. 
Oh, oh you're talking oh, about God. America. Yeah. Talking about I don't know. Congress. And if you're not in the World Bank, we will invade you. Yeah, so far so good. <laughs> There's been yeah, the data. They've been doing a just a boffo job of cleaning up all those terrorist countries that are fucking everybody else. You can be terrorist too if somebody wow. in your family. Well, no, that's the myth because look what happened in the United States in the last six months and now nah, they fought themselves. Yep. They didn't go against any enemy. They they took it to the neighbor. <laughs> ah, kick your ass, neighbor. <laughs> I'll burn your house to the ground, you idiot. Wow. Yeah. What 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 how is that pro- progress in any way? <laughs> that's just stupid. Yeah, to to insinuate that here we are in 2020 and we're so ignorant that we just go out and throw bricks at windows for shits and giggles is idiotic. People got paid to do these things. They they're far too lazy to just do it. Yeah. Nobody left behind. Everybody gets a trophy just for participating. And you know, it didn't get a lot of attention where the cleanup crews of people that, you know, believe in their society bullshit, and they're out there cleaning up the mess these freaking idiots left for them. Mm-hmm. Just like little slaves. It was, I, 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 I don't know. Where, where does uh, a problem like this even begin where you're going to end up in a riot? It's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, how can you be gullible enough to believe this isn't the government trying to make something happen? <laughs> You've been programmed by the television to believe what you're told. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. How come it'll work on us then, man? Are we broken? <laughs> yep, we're broken. <laughs> Very All right, Janus, man. We're broke. Well, I better hit the pipe then, just in honor of that. I just did. Yeah. 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 You know, (laughs) I have the luxury of being able to smoke. Me too. You know, some people don't. Hey. They'd like to, but hey, it's either product is like you got to travel 80 miles to get it, risk your freedom to get it in the lockdown and all this shit. Wow. What a mess America turned into. I risk my freedom every time I go out the door. Yep. And, is, and that's reality, right? That's not just you. That's, that's being my reality. Sarcastic. Yeah. Oh, no. Wow. Especially if I'm um, if I'm driving the car. I'm just yeah, going to jail every time I go anywhere. Wow, that's just fucked up. Well, things changed, yeah. They got all totalitarian on us. Yes. You, not me. You. I shouldn't say us, but I feel a part of it still, mentally, for some reason. Well, you know, yeah. I think it's the the ability to understand what's going on at the level I see it. It makes me feel like I know stuff, or, you know, at least I think shit. So I can participate in a conversation about it, to right. some level or another. But when you guys get on your, hey, you want to go all electric and, and uh, get it, into something really detailed. <laughs> oh, Larry, oh, yeah, like to know. Tell yeah. Stories. Yes. Actually, well, I have a question. I Larry. have a question for Larry. Ah, there we go. Um, on the coils, okay, you got your coil and your magnetic fields are, 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 are what's uh, beefing up these circuits to produce the amperage they're producing, okay, right? Right. When you come off the coil with those wires, do you not have to go to heavier gauge wire to be able to handle that load? To absolutely, absolutely. Okay, every so single I... load wire must be the size to handle that load. That weighted right load. load. Yeah. Yeah. Once they leave the coils, we may hook twenty-two gauge wire to it, but if it's taking you a hundred amps, that's got to be wire rated for a hundred amps. Which is uh, uh, number two. So you're going from 24 gauge wire to, or whatever you said, 28 gauge wire to, or 22 gauge wire to number two. Are so you you're dropping 20 one. gauges or 10. Yeah, 10. 10 full wire size is smaller to to give you the same exact output. And how how far off of the coil do you have to be? What's the limit of 
you have to be how close do you have to be to the core with this connection uh we're we're generally working about three feet from the coil. So you've got 22 gauge wire running three feet off of the coil and it's still holding that tra that load. Yeah, yeah, with no temperature increase. That far away from the coil. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We could, we could. I mean, you would think that uh, once it leaves that, that magnetic a uh, circuit there, it would lose the ability to carry that load without heating up. Well, it is the magnetic circuit that does the whole trick. But it extends uh, out on the wires three feet away from the coil? No, you don't understand. Uh, that power is produced inside the coil, uh -huh. and, and it's just transferred into the output wires. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's there's no heat at that point. There's it's it's all zero resistance. When you when you hook two of the circuits together, the resistance drops. When you hook three of the circuits together, the resistance goes to zero. Okay. Three or four. So. Yeah, I, it, we don't have any problem with that at all. Okay. I was just and curious, because, uh, like, once you leave the, the magnetic field of the donut, it seems like it would degrade the farther away it gets. Uh, yeah, it will after a point. But you put a disconnect on it, you put big wires on the disconnect going to the load, and the little wires from the coils go under the disconnect, and you're done. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, and you're working three feet away. Yeah. So, so and that doesn't all, affect it at all. Okay. It's all in the box. Okay. Well, that's, that was my question. Yeah, uh... That hasn't been a problem, uh, and I'm sure that if we got closer to the coil, there may be another amp or so yeah. coming out. Yeah. But when it 10 to 1, who cares? Right. You know. Uh, yeah. You, you've got I'm, enough. <laughs> Don't be greedy. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they can, they can be more efficient, but at this point, yeah, they're efficient enough. And that'll just give us round two. So you two guys up. are going to go with training people to wind coils and printing them with the, the 3D printers with the with the tracks on them to yeah to to guide yeah. So uh, if if after doing the demonstration, are y'all going to uh, go the the machine route? Try to find a way to to actually that, manufacture these things? Yeah, that was discussed in this morning's meeting. Yeah. Uh, we will eventually have a machine to do it. Yeah. But it's going to take a five-axis yeah. CNC machine uh -huh. that's able to pass the spindle from one side through to the other and receive it on both sides because it goes back and forth. It's going to have yeah. to turn and twist and all kinds of gyrations on the donut itself. Uh -huh. So that's a real, real expensive machine. Oh, yeah. And when you add the, the program to it, the programmer we talked to said, yeah, we can do that for about $400,000. Right. So when we get a million dollars for a machine, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. And that comes back to uh, working with the group. You're you're still going to be doing that. Um, I never got to my real question, which was the program you talked about, building the kits, having all that stuff. How is that going to be affected with all this? Oh, did, did great. We've got somebody else to build the kits for us. <laughs> right. Yeah. When when so we so you've you got out. that in the deal that you can you can you will be able to purchase. Coils from these these 
Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll we'll buy the products from the local people that give them right. free energy. Right. But I'm talking about you being able to uh, purchase them outside of this project. And like yeah. ship, ship them back over here and anywhere else that we somebody may want one. Yeah, if if you want one, once this project is going, you just get the address of the manufacturer and say, I want one of your units. How much is it going to cost me to ship it? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's already down on on in the deal. Yeah, and that's we're we're gonna have deal. we're gonna have different manufacturers for each different coil. So okay. not one not one guy knows everything there is to know about it. Right. We're gonna have manufacturers for the uh there's a, a wire manufacturer gonna be in the right, yeah, you mentioned that the project. So you can get your magnet wire there. I want a magnet company that makes magnets. Right. So, yeah. And it's yeah, all... To make your rollback race? Yeah, it's three circuits. So that's seven wires that you need. You ground wire and six conductors. Right. And that's a plug-in module. You just plug that in. So you plug these units together, we'll have an assembly plant that, that just plugs them together. The assembly plant won't know how they're made. They'll just know I'm supposed to plug this connector into that connector. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I get that. Light up a bowl. Who? <laughs> yeah, I just heard somebody spark something up, and I was like, wait a minute. I did about five minutes ago. No. <laughs> Can you get yourself Kush, some Indica, some Sativa, some, some G13? <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. Um, huh. the, the, the systems are all going to be modular. Right. Just, just plug in. Uh, that way we won't have to spend hours and hours and hours wiring the thing uh, at the installation point. So one of and these modules, okay, so like the one you're talking about that you're going to have on the pole to power two houses. Yeah. That's, that's five coils. Five Four coils. Five coils, whichever. Okay. And each one plugs into the one in front of it. The one with the haulback array plugs into the to the uh, component coil, and the component coil plugs into the load coil, and that's all you got to do. That powers the house. It's crazy. It takes more power. Put two load coils in it, and they just plug into one another. If a, if a module goes out, if we take a lightning strike and it, and it burns some of the wires on some of the modules, unplug them, plug a new one in. You're, you're back in business in an hour. Wow. And a lightning strike would be welcome if we had a large number of houses. Yeah, and a, and a diffusion rod or something. To well, you can put a lightning suppressor on each pole to start with. That way, if that pole takes a hit, right. that surge goes through the protector and is dumped to ground. But the rest of it, the beginning of that surge, before it's dumped to ground, goes back into the system. Yeah, it gives it a boost. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it just gives yeah. us more power to sell. So any idea what the price point would be on one of those units? What, the, the five coils, a pole? How much it would cost all together? For a whole pole to run two houses? Um, well, let's see. Uh, $1,600 for all the coils. Uh, another $100 for the box. Uh, another $500 for the pole. Uh, $2,200. Split between two houses, uh, 
you pay more than that for your carpet. Yeah, I just buy it. Yeah. Uh. And you don't have to have two houses. It's just two houses will give you more of a load to put on it, so that it'll produce more. Right, right. Yeah, you could just get it for yourself, or yeah, it would work for uh, remote situations and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Put one in the trunk of your car and have all the power you want on your picnic. Right. So, um, I guess that gets back to the the question I asked earlier. It doesn't have to be on a pole. No, not at all. Uh, that just gives us a little bit more voltage differential between the ground and the light fixture. Right. We can we can boost up that higher voltage more. So this box you take in your trunk, you'd still have to plant a ground somewhere wherever you go, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Drive a stake in. Drive a stake in and and, and flip a switch. Yeah. Because we're making and breaking the ground wire. It's right. always hot. It's always hot. We're just breaking the ground wire. Right. Well, that's just amazing. Well, how long does it take to draw up the plans without actually, or can you do that without seeing the land? Doesn't uh, yeah, does, does matter. No, it, it, I've already drawn up the plans, and that's a simple wiring diagram. So, so it doesn't really matter how the design of the village is. You'll accommodate that no matter what? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just don't know, Larry. I, maybe they're dumb questions. You put up one pole with a box on top of it for every house, every two houses. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And if you're in an industry, you put up one pole for every machine. And that's it. So you're going you're going above ground, right? Mm-hmm. So is this what, some form of wireless or what? How does all this work? No, no there's yeah. a wire. There's a wire going to it. No, the, the, but okay, so let me, right, but because, oh, <laughs> okay, go ahead. Let me kind of break it down so it'll make sense. You've got two houses with a pole, and you've got two more houses with another pole. How are you connecting those two together? With one wire between both boxes. One wire. Yeah, and all that wire has to be is enough to handle the 12 volts that these systems operate at. So a 12 volt AC coming out of the driver. Yeah. yeah, coming out of the very first coil. And so you tie six of these together, or three three of these six houses, yeah. three three poles. Yeah. Tie together because you have an extra leg on each one of those, which create your three phase power, there which you, you could which you can run a business yeah. off of a, a convenience store or something of that nature. Yeah. Yeah, that gives you each of the legs. And then you have a wire or you have a wire coming off, two wires coming off the pole, one to each house. So basically from each pole you'll have three wires coming off of it. One to yeah. each house and one to the next pole down the line. And maybe another one going back to the other pole down the other way. Yeah. So possibly yeah, up to exactly. four up to four wires coming off each pole. Yeah. Two to the house and one going each direction. Okay. Does that make sense, Flash? More or less, but I mean it is hmm, it's more difficult for me to, to listen and visualize something without paperwork. Yeah. You know, I'm <laughs> you're one of the visual people. Sirk Sirk's tried that with me for years and I just always come up short seeing what, what she's explaining. So, hmm. but okay. the good side of it is I've done I've done boxes, you know, uh, electrical plugs and light switch, yeah, in installations where they wanted three light switch boxes on one side of this and then four over here and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I got the idea of jumping, you know, you jump from one source to the next. But the weird thing is that it takes more power to the more you go. But the way Larry's explained it is the opposite of that. It is. It's completely counterintuitive. 
you're not transmitting power, you're creating power at the source, at the at the load. Right. right. And I've not ever been introduced to this particular kind of thinking in my life. Nobody ever. Right. Everything's always got to be generated from some other source. You're pushing it instead of pulling it. Yeah. So I'm conditioned to expect to have to work to get the thing to happen. And you took the work out of it. Yeah. By just eliminating the the eddy. Yeah. And that seems to solve all the problems that follow after it. You cool it. You keep it cool. Ta-da. Well, it doesn't sound so complicated when I say it like that. But physically doing it with all the electronic components, that's a little different. There are no electronic components anymore. It's full coils and a whole Okay, crate. see, I, I still talk like a dummy on your show, Larry. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, what, hmm, what I mean is you take all the moving parts out of shit and it doesn't work. This is what I know. <laughs> so, um, and, and I'm, not doubt, I'm not doubting, I'm just... The, I'm put, presenting the logic I run on. Yeah. Yeah. If you can't see it, it ain't there, Johnny. <laughs> well, I can't see air, but it's there. So I get confused. <laughs> yeah. The Mr. rule. Miss Girl had a question. Miss Girl had a question, which I think you answered already about the lightning. Um. Uh. She asked also, can the wire be run underground? Yes. Between the yeah. houses. Yeah. After after you get a system going, after we have a, a few of these houses that are above ground, that yeah. will provide the extra power that we would lose by moving that box from the top of the pole down to the ground level. Right, right. Okay. It just just comes out of the system itself. Yeah. And later we can go back and put the underground service to all the houses. Okay. Yeah. And re- so just go back and retrofit the original yeah. few that you ran above now. Yeah. And on the lightning question, she missed the answer. Um, basically, it'll take a lightning hit. Uh, the way he's designing it, it'll actually boost the system. Uh, unless it actually directly hits a box and maybe physically burns out wires that way, and then you just replace whatever calls for damage. Yeah. Uh, and... The, the way the system is, there's there's at least three capacity circuits in every in every coil, and yeah. those get filled up. And when they get filled up, <coughs> then if your equipment where you're at isn't calling for it, equipment someplace else may be calling for it. And if that's not, then you pump that onto the grid and sell it back to the power company. Yeah, that all, all your overage gets gets sold off. Yeah, if you get a big hit, it separates out and goes through all the other systems, and that goes that puts an an excess in the system, and it just goes to the power company. Gets pumped out for the people yeah. that are paying for the electricity. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, when the whole world has this, there won't be anybody to sell it to, though, because <laughs> everybody will have it. Eventually, uh, you'll have enough power to float your city. Yeah. I have a relevant question for you, Larry and Rob. Okay. Do you either of you guys know why the power went out in Connecticut today? Uh, I have no idea. No oh, idea. Uh, I don't, it was, a, it was a, a hurricane or something, wasn't it? <laughs> Hit the coast. No, I have no... If I knew, I... Or, or the tornadoes or something. They were, they were having a big wind. Well, it, I read. Uh, I remember Beetle talking. Uh, yeah, I read something briefly before I came on, and it said that uh, the power was out in the whole state. Millions yeah. of people were powerless. Yeah. And well, I think Beetle lives there, and oh, and he's, he's back. He, so maybe yeah. he can tell us if he's. I don't know if he tuned in or not. He was on earlier on the RLM chat. I seen him. He's, he's in he's on the, Yeah, he's. I'll but he wasn't. People in the Northeast and find out. Yeah, Beetle lives out there. That's where yeah, Beetle's from Connecticut. And but he's not he on the show. show you guys are. Oh, well, he's in the channel. It's hard to think of questions when we're live. I should write things down first, but then I'd be like, ah, what if it didn't fit? Now, I haven't heard anything about it yet, but I've been busy this morning. 
Yeah, well, but he was. He well, was. Oh yeah, you sure, sure have, Mister. Oh. Anyways, we used to call this when I was doing petroleum sales. We I broke in calling this cracking the wheel, Larry. Yeah. You just got to get that one guy to to buy. Once he does, then you get confidence and you know you can do it. So. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's just. I don't know. Larry seems pretty confident to me. I don't think confidence is an issue. <laughs> Other people having confidence in it is is the problem. Yeah, get your customer to start nodding his head yes, and then just keep it on and give him a pen, let him sign. Yeah. But, Larry, he's dealing with folks that are intelligent and credited and such, and he even made it so I could understand it. So I think Larry's on to something here. It might take a little bit more time, of course, because of the COVID dilemma that we are all encountering, but yeah, alas, ah, come on, you can't lock people up for a year, and you know, you're going to have insanity if they yeah. don't let it fly yeah. soon. Well, it's already yeah. shown. Yeah. Well, yeah. Out, ah, controlled, ah, controlled violence. You know, the soldiers are here, bro. It's a, it's a straight up, right out of Be uh, Behold a Pale Horse. You've, re you've probably read the book from William, William Cooper, but... Yep, I have it. Yeah. It was like the real Alex Jones back before the you know like government killed him and replaced him with the fake Alex. The yeah, fuck Alex Jones, but yeah, dude. The uh, I don't know, dude. Like the whole Portland thing could get really out of control. What do you think about that? <laughs> Portland. Yeah, I think that's. A, uh, I, think I don't know what to think about all that shit. Really, to be honest with you, it's all staged. I know that much. I don't know, it's man. All, they brought it's all being funded. Movies. Uh, once they're there, I don't think they're going anywhere, bro. Like they're probably just gonna stick around and see how COVID nineteen part two t it turns out. Yeah, and the federal police are just policing the federal property. Maybe I don't know. You're right. Whatever. They're bringing out like a lot of like national guard too. Yeah, he just uh, he just uh, uh, signed some order or something and given national guard. Uh, well, traveling. What did you see with your own eyes, though? I'm not there yet, but I am going to head out there probably eventually and um, take pictures, but then I'm just going to well, walk. Where you've back. been already, yeah. was there any kind of that, or was that? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, well, so far, I've been on my, my uh, so far, I've been on my 10-speed mountain bike, and I was, like, biking, like, throughout New England, like, Haverhill, Mass, uh, Everett, Mass, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, South Portland and Portland, Maine, Boston, I checked out, like, some other small random town in Mass. A lot, a lot of random towns in Mass. I just got on a bus and came out here. My next stop, eventually, whenever... I'm going to wind up back in the Midwest, but I'm going to go to, like, Portland, Oregon uh, first and some other places before I come back to this area. And wow. really... Unless I find a job soon or whatever, that's cool. Then I'll just stay here and say, fuck Portland. Portland's going to turn sideways real quick, bro, but, like, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> Jeez. I have no I, I have no idea what to compare this to at all. I've never uh, never been in this position before. You really Rob. Read that book though, seriously. It's uh, it's oh yeah, probably. that's a classic. It's, yeah, I'm pretty much. That, I'm pretty sure most of the people. <laughs> You've heard of that book, Bill Cooper's book, The Hell's Pale Horse. You've heard of Bill Cooper, right? Black. Me, I don't know. Maybe I have. I, oh. I'm not familiar. I don't know. Wow, I thought everybody heard of Bill Cooper. I'll do it in my when I travel. I, unfortunately, I don't have um, total recall over the last 60 years. Yeah. Oh. And I was, I was reading for the first, I don't know. I didn't. I stopped reading heavily, I guess, about Hemmerett heavily, regularly, about the 90s. Stop, yeah. Stop doing yeah. it so much, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I like to I like to read for a period in my life, but now not so much. Now I got enough reading with the internet webs. Entertains me. Well, he was because he's you know, a, a military a man and he saw some things and wrote a book about it. So yeah, but I want to be famous. I got a birthday coming up in September. The old pale horse yeah. is just a plan for the new world order, bro. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to sell me on any of the conspiracy shit. The conspiracy stuff is the truth, and what we're looking at is a bunch of bullshit. That's Simple the as that. Yeah. Whatever you see, don't believe it. It's a big the story. The truth around yeah. go that far. You'll be sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you so. <laughs> right. Smash. Hey, 
Stanley, I mean, Stanley yeah. Butler was, was long before Bill Cooper. <laughs> Bill uh, Cooper. Hmm. See, it's not so much the names that get my attention, it's the content. Check out his podcast, uh, Mystery Babylon or whatever. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's a computer. My computer does not do or whatever. Um, you'll find <laughs> his podcast under that name. Okay, let's write in the sound future reference. I'll find it for you. So, are you guys feeling superior in a lockdown world, or is it just my man? Yeah, dude, I'm benefiting greatly from it. All these fucking businesses are shut down, so I can pretty much, like, camp out anywhere <laughs> when I travel. Uh, and yeah. everyone's yeah. wearing masks, so I can pretty much easily identify who's an idiot and who's not. Before, I just thought it was, like, some kind of weird, like, fucking... <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you had to guess. <laughs> yeah. now, now, they off, now they off themselves. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. There it is for you, Flash, in the chat room. Oh, are you having fun That's through your adventure, you though? You can rob anybody you want. Oh, yeah, big time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it used to be they'd freak out if you walked in a bank with a mask on like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd be comfortable in a in a civilization where, yeah, because when the few people that were wearing them around here were irritating me. Now I can tolerate it, but ugh, it's like, wow. You that afraid oh my God, I, was, I went out to smoke earlier and there was a guy riding a bicycle with a freaking mask on. Hmm. Almost, uh, almost. Right, bicycles with black masks on and dead heat in the northeast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking idiot. Oh, that was was at uh, point, but the first time I saw it, I was like, "Oh, uh, damn. Uh, <laughs> I recommend it. I think if you, I think if you're for the mask, you should go to the park and run a mile every day. Oh yeah, yeah. Because well, you know what? I feel superior. I'm sorry, Rob. I have an ego here, mm. and I just have a an understanding of breath that other people don't seem to share. <laughs> you, you intelligent supremacist. I must be <laughs> intelligent supremacist. I don't know. Some folks would call me a dumbass, so it's debatable. But I guess the results are what matters, right? So my goal is to enjoy life. And yeah, when I don't enjoy goal. life, I've learned to not blame the other fucking idiot over across the way for making my life fucked up. That's not how it works. I can be in a good mood whether he's an idiot or not. <laughs> Doesn't matter. But if I want to, I can get dragged into the idiot game and compete to see who's the bigger idiot. <laughs> no, you don't play that game? Oh, I like to play that game. I just don't like to do it in, in face-to-face life. I do it on the internet web. Yeah. You can be the baddest ass motherfucker in the world from your keyboard. <laughs> the world is going to become an instant the internet. The, the, you the internet can never, is, never uh, lose an argument on the internet because you're always right. You're going to be yeah. walking around with glasses on and you'll see people's profiles pop up on your digital glasses and shit and that dude's going to be wearing <laughs> You're going to have to have a fucking profile. Wow. No, I don't want to do that. Gray eye. That's all it is. Five so, do you have a smartphone? Fox. Well, yeah, of course. No. Ouch. Why? I don't pay for it. It doesn't <laughs> matter. No, 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 no. I, I appreciate that part, but it's the having it. My wife doesn't pay for it, but she has it. She works for it. It comes with a package for her job. Well, pretty soon you're going to mine and replace me with a laptop. Uh, still, yeah, I'm a slave to the internet, but not to the phone. So I think I'm special. Well, when you're on the road like that, you got to go with what you got, man. <laughs> no, I used to get like back in the day without without smartphones and shit. It's just it's so convenient. So if I can't have it, I will. If I don't, I don't really need it. Shit, I was right. hitchhiking in 1971. <laughs> Ask for the cash, baby. Nobody arrives for free. <laughs> Am I right? right. Not so. Yeah. In those days, people were really generous, and when oh, you were yeah. young, yeah. there was an amazing amount of nice folks. A lot of times they'd give you money or, or take you to uh, feed you lunch yeah. or something. Yeah, where are you going to? Uh, how much money you got on your uh, Yeah, here's 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah, back in the day, and it was like, wow, no fucking way. Sure. Yeah. Here. I've had that happen. 
And then there's other times where uh, people didn't have money for, you know, they were picking up hitchhikers for gas money. Yeah. And a few times where I got picked up for, hey, you got some gas money. We're really low on gas, but we got room if you want to chip in. Sure. Fuck yeah. Here. Yeah. Money's money. See, because all that yeah. commerce crap just always kept getting me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was generous with shit and shared what I had with people, like a communist, that's the good times. That's good stuff on paper. I don't know. Me and Sirk seem to get along that's, really well with it. That's all good as long as it's voluntary. Yeah. See, when you, when you find a partnership that works for you too, that that kind of helps things. Yeah. But yeah, well, we're, a lot of us the are being forced is to that Society's play. been designed and built in such a way that everybody's scrambling just to keep making ends meet. They don't have right. anything left over to, to to share the wealth. So now they've made it damn near impossible to form a partnership in person. Nose to nose, and that nose to nose shit makes a big freaking difference. Oh yeah, people need human you know, contact. Like, yeah, like Larry meeting up nose to nose with somebody he's talked to on the on, you know on the screen and with a face to face computer thing. It's all different. But day. it's yeah, it's still yeah. When you sit in the same room with people, your yeah. vibrations take over. Yeah, yep. uh, yeah, you get the full effect of. Who you're doing okay, with. so imagine imagine the advantage, mental advantage you have if you believe you are in control of what you vibrate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I figured that part out. Went, wow, you can do all kinds of stuff with this stuff. It's beyond words. You just got to do it. And it's just thinking. Mm -hmm. And the results, if you believe you're going to have good results and you get them, what do you attribute it to? <laughs> Yeah. Wow, I did it right. I must be perfect. Or, I tapped into that frequency. Hmm. How did I do that? Create the world you want to live in. That, see, Uncle Larry, do I pay attention or what? You do. <laughs> and you're way off in the corner. Can't yeah. hardly hear you. I do is create the world I want to live in. Exactly. Wow. See, and you've taken it to a new level. <laughs> and you're sharing with other people. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, if they're if I'm the only one that knows about it, sadly, yeah. Well, yeah. hang around and make it happen. Yep. It's yes, all sir. about being connected to the right people in the end, isn't it? Yes, sir. Where there's a whip, there's a way. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> You call yeah. that a whip? <laughs> Shit, you pussy. Hit me again. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you meet people like that? That's what I want to know. <laughs> fuck you up. <laughs> wow. I've never, I never in my life have I ever uh, welcomed some of those people. Fuck, bro. I know some really fucking interesting people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, probably interesting, but crazy. Uh, yes, absolutely. I wonder where where do you draw the line with what's crazy though? Isn't that uh, people? My definition of mental illness is people who prey on each other, people mm -hmm. who just, uh, people who are self destructive, people who see something, know it happened, deny it happened, and then try to force a denial on other people. That's another kind of mental illness. Wow. Uh, strong dissociative tendencies, stuff like that. But otherwise, I, I, the rest is just like eccentricity. <laughs> Good way to put it. Yeah. It's all subjective. You're going to see it, you know. Like, I actually want to drug people. They want to label everything. It's all social homogenization. I went through that for 14 years when I was a kid, but I got off the meds, got back to normal, because the meds are designed to damage your brain. So I could go on for hours talking about psychiatry, but mostly it's just that yeah. control. Ah, good. You got out of it. Yeah. I'm gonna a lot of people fight. never recover, man. Hey, Rob, you want to fight for supremacy? Yeah, man. <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> You're supreme. That was easy. How's it feel to be at number one? Uh, no different. See, yeah, that's what I thought. Just because people agree with you doesn't change the fact that you may be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. you always have to have that just that little bit of room to change your mind, and it's like we're walking on a razor's edge. Cause, yeah. So it takes up so much 
like energy to think that much about life. It's exhausting. So it's easier to just throw a mask on and follow the idiot in, in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. Big, very big stick. Yeah, so sure. I'll put the mask on. I got a nine on, on my back or something, bro. And if these crazy mask wearing fucking freaks want to like attack me, bro, it's on my Donkey Kong. <laughs> right. Okay, bro. We got to smoke pot to calm down to their level in the first place. So they're vibrating so fast, they don't even know what they're doing. Sad. Yeah. That's, that's, what I, that's how I would explain it in words. But yeah. you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Big time, actually, yeah. Dude, it's like, to learn. Have you ever been in a silent room with a TV on, but, like, no noise coming out of it except the frequency itself, and you do that for, like, an hour, and then you turn the TV off, and it's like, whoa, peace. But what do you mean peace? Like, we're, we're, before it's like, there's, not, there's no noise coming from the TV. It's just the frequency itself. Like, Larry did this yesterday, bro. And when I turned the fucking TV off, I was like, whoa, I feel like my brain is working normal. And we started having a yep. normal conversation. Yep. No, I've not gone to that extreme with yeah. that particular, but I'll... I'll, yeah, I'll TV is constantly broadcasting a carrier wave. Yeah, but we don't have a TV here. We only have the internet. Well, that's good. Maybe that's why you can think better than most people. I don't know. Cirque wasn't uh, me or her wasn't too concerned about no damn TV. Yeah. But we, uh, I'm, the, I'm a movie freak though, so it kind of fucks her up. That's when you just get a big monitor for your computer. Oh yeah, we've got, we've got all that. We've got all those goodies and whatnot. It's just we don't share a, uh, the exact taste. Of each other. Oh, oh, yeah. She likes what she likes. Yeah, I, we're the same way. 18 years older than she is. So yeah. our basic our basic wiring is set on uh, different time zones. <laughs> yeah. And I come from a time before her, so I yeah. appreciate shit she doesn't even have an interest in. Yeah. And vice versa, but we balance it, you know. Yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting to live with somebody that you're so similar to but different than. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm enjoying Keeps it. Keeps it interesting, yeah. It could be a dr Oh, man. I could uh, I could be in America right now, probably going insane, trying to fight this crap that's not even real, instead of tolerating the inconvenience of other people's weakness, which is what I think I'm doing here. They get afraid. You know, oh, the flu is going to come and it's going to kill people. Oh. And then this added extra crap and this nonsense. So we're still climbing. Twenty uh oh six. We're gonna go financial. Oh, uh, no, get this out. So like two hundred and fifty thousand to seven hundred and fifty thousand people die at worldwide every year from the flu, and the corona deaths in one year are the same shit. What if they're just relabeling the flu? Uh, yeah, right. considering that uh, uh, flu and and, and cold related deaths are down across the board. Yeah, I would say some of that is happening. Yep. But if you're taught to believe that everything that Rob Work says is wrong, well, that's what you're going to actually believe if that's what you were taught. Yeah. So we've got that to come up with is the enemy of the truth are people that tell their, their uh, indoctrinees, <laughs> if you hear this, this is bad. Don't listen. Yeah. And it, it seems to affect the wiring of the person that takes the info in. Well, I don't know. I'm looking onto it, trying to understand what I'm seeing and decipher it. It's a, it's like a bowl of spaghetti. Whiz, since we made our first breakthrough. Mm -hmm. What? You're, you're way in the background, Larry. I couldn't hear. Contrary to electrical uh, knowledge. He said they've been dealing with that ever since he made the first breakthrough. People saying, oh, no, that can't be. That doesn't work like that. Electricity only has three parts. Yep. Not five. Yep. So every you time can't. somebody tells me, oh, no, you can't do that, you know what I do? Yeah. I go give it a try. Yep. Yep. And you know what I find out? Don't jump off that cliff of 100 feet high. Don't do it. Oh, <laughs> you can't do that. Some things are obvious. Yeah, you can if it's at the beach. <laughs> well, sometimes. Depends. It's a giant pile of money. Don't worry. It feels like a mattress when you fall on quarters. 
Oh, no, it doesn't. It feels like hey, Carl, it's trust me. It will be just like the cartoon. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Ivan is like hitting concrete. you got to know how to cut the water. Yep. Yeah. And if you don't, you can break your feet, your arms, whatever yeah. you're going in with. you got to no, know thanks. how to do it. I'll just pass. Thanks. I'll go down and get in and step down into the water like normal. <laughs> well, when I was like four years uh, old, I don't need to my father... My father took me to the swimming pool, the public swimming pool, yeah. to teach me how to swim. So here I am, four years old. He's taught me how to swim. I can swim across the thing. Now he wants me to go up the high dive board. <laughs> so I did, and I dove off the end. And it's all just a matter of how you cut the water with your hands uh-huh. when you hit the water. Uh-huh. And if you hit it wrong, yeah, boy, you learn about to respect that shit. Yeah. But yeah, I was four years old. Anyway, head. So the, the the guy that's doing the uh, lifeguarding doesn't know who I am yet. My father didn't introduce me to him, so he'd know. Uh-huh. And I'm going to, and I wanted to go dive, so he says, "Okay, go ahead." And the diver and the safe, safety kid comes trying to get me down, and I'm kicking him in the head with my foot. <laughs> Let go of me! Get off me! <laughs> but I don't remember it. But my father loved to tell the story. Yeah, he's a poor guy. You're kicking him in the head. And he's trying not to hurt you because he thinks <laughs> you're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> you know, so that's. But the time that I grew up in is when your parents encouraged you to do dangerous shit. So right. you grew up and be strong, not a pussy. Yeah. yeah. Not it. If you even have a feeling, they just medicate their kids. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's broken. What do I do, doctor? And then, then they yeah. go and do it. <laughs> Dude, our, our parents are just, bro. Wow. Seriously, like, That's selfish. Crazy. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all my drug indu- inducing is all done in the name of recreation. <laughs> they had me on high blood pressure medicine for about a year, give or take. Can't remember how long it was, but I figured it out finally and stopped it. But everything else I do because I want to. Exactly. Hit that ball, baby. Yeah. Yep. That's the bubbler. That's Mr. That's what they should be giving kids, bro. It's fucking weed. It's like the number one mental uh, healer. <laughs> no shit. Bro. Yeah, you want to call it? Hit, call a kid down here. Hit this. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay, chill the fuck here, out of here, here. Here's a gummy bear. How's that? Thanks for that. <laughs> In my day, they didn't have ADHD. They had sit down, shut up, and pay attention. <laughs> Pretty much, and it worked. Yeah. Because either you did, you either you sat down and you shut up, or you got the fuck out and you went and did what you wanted to. Yeah. Well, a lot of the, my peers mocked me because I took that road. I'd go, fuck these idiots. I don't want to do that. Oh, you got to do that. It's the rules. Ah, fuck you and the rules. And I'd leave. There you go. I don't know. People. I'm not a big fan of people. I I barely made it out of high school, bro. (laughs) Well, the words and the actions are contradictory, so I I find people very confusing. They say one thing, on say, on the Internet webs, and then in physical life they do a completely different thing. Oh, yeah. You know, like the anger that the, is generated from the police, right? So the other morning, somebody posted this link about, um, what was it? I can't remember what it was. No, it was some violence link. Oh, this girl throws coffee on these two guys eating burritos for not wearing their masks. Yeah. <laughs> that's and, that and they beat the shit out of her boyfriend for it. Yeah. Well, okay, sure. Blah, 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 blah. But... It, to promote it like, and and I would have done this and that on top of this and that took place already. I would have smacked that up. Well, yeah. Uh, he was there. probably going to smack her and the boyfriend had gotten away. <laughs> well, well, got in between. Can you really judge what you would have done in a situation that you have never been in? Hell yeah. I have situations like that going through my head 24-7. I am locked and loaded and ready to smack a hoe. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, it is I'm, a anger problem. I don't know, dude, but yes, I would smack a hoe. Okay. Right on paper. 
Okay, so you're, <laughs> you're seeing life at a heightened sense of reality. But when I do it, they call me paranoid. No, dude, it opens up the no, door. serious. Under, you're under, under, yeah. your head. I, I don't agree. know, man. You get hit with hot coffee, you're you're gonna get up. I can't I even get hit with hot coffee because I'm always keeping an eye out for people walking by me, waiting for it to happen, even if it's like a one in a billion chance. That's how paranoid I am. No, yeah, that's yeah. that's a high state of awareness. That crazy shit happened to me. That shouldn't happen. So eventually, Parano you know, paranoid is when you think it'll happen, but it won't because it's not gonna. But what you have is a high situational of awareness. awareness. Yeah, big difference. Yeah, I, I I never would see that happen here. I've not seen any violence where I'm living since I moved here. I yeah, saw a couple argue in the grocery store, but they were from somewhere else. And once in a great while, somebody's kid might act up in the grocery. But as a normal rule, the children are really well behaved and they mind their parents. They're real close. They walk down the street holding hands down the main street where I drink. <laughs> <laughs> I sit there and <laughs> <the day. laughs> some of the kids smile or wave and some of the kids ignore me. It just depends on the parents. Yeah. You know, you can you can see the grown up in the child. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no doubt. And then if, if, if the kid smiles at me and I smile back, and then the one of the parents should respond, and that's the, the normal, you know. If they don't, then I know, wow, your kid's way better than you are. Because <laughs> I'm a scary-looking guy, you know, in the social <laughs> world. Yeah, they only hold hands when they see you, Flash. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, what I mean is, to some... Some minds, I'm a, I'm an intimidating character because of the length of my hair, uh, my face hair. Yeah, it freaks <laughs> them out. And some kids smile and wave, and their parents don't like it. And some kids smile and wave, and their parents go, "Cool." The kids yeah. becoming human. Yeah, there's you know an equal amount of uh, indoctrination here. Yep. It's just such a small place. There's so few people to encounter that nothing really ever happens. It's just usually uh, niceties and how you doing. It's just, just boring as fuck. Larry. Larry gave up on us. He went, I no, think I he's didn't. hitting the pipe. Still here. I'm just listening. Did you get yeah, to go, did boring, you get, boring did, did you get to go fishing this week? Ah, fishing. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. It Get to the mic. Get to the mic. Get to the mic. Yes, I went fishing. It was a beautiful, perfect day. Uh, a gentle, gentle north breeze that kept it cool. Nice. Uh, easy to handle the boat. We tied this week just because I was tired and wanted to go home before I caught one more fish than he did. <laughs> okay. And? It, it was good. Uh we had a mixed bag. Uh, I caught the biggest one, but it was a catfish that uh -huh. hit a crankbait. Uh -huh. uh, only, only a little over two pounds. wasn't very big at all. Uh -huh. uh, we caught two different species of bluegill and a crappie. And, oh, I guess I did win. I caught two bass. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did get one more than he did. Okay. Well, we came home at the right time. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. There I you forgot go. I caught two bass. Yeah. All right. But they were, they were little bitty. Little yeah. bitty. I was yeah. one that wasn't much bigger than the plug. Wow. Yeah. Ain't just everybody can catch them baby fish now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, what size hooks are you using? <laughs> you got perch hooks on there or something or what? <laughs> He, he just got unlucky. Yeah, he was yeah. having a big mouth. Thought he was thought he was a big boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, cool. Glad you got to go fishing in between all that craziness oh. last this week. Yeah, I I had to get in the boat this week. Um, my head was yeah. Right. That's how you get clear. Yeah. Yep. yep. So what's next for the uh, project as far as? Where you well, went to? Now, now I got to get 
all of the drawings on one page. Uh-huh. And, yeah, it, it's going to be writing a whole lot of small stuff, but I think I can I think I can get it all on one page, and that way we can photocopy it or something so as wiring instructions. Okay. But that, that's why my next it, project. Why does it have to be limited to one page? Can you use both sides? <laughs> well, it it just makes it easier to see how it all goes together at one time rather than right. having to look at four different drawings. Can, can the page fold up and be the size of a poster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, that would work. Or can it be electronic and you can just uh, scroll down? I, if I knew how to do it with electronic stuff, I would do it that way. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to use... I, I don't even know how to use PowerPoint. Yeah. No, so I'm, I'm illiterate totally. Yeah. There you go. That's the difference, like... But that's the one thing about my generation that, like... Oh, yeah. Have, it's kind of good, like, we did, we like we have all this technical training, but we're dependent on technology. Like, the first thing we did in, like, high school was learn how to use PowerPoint in history class on, like, freshman year. I don't know. Yeah. There you go. Got somebody that can at least get you started. There we go. We didn't have any home ec. We didn't have any outdoor classes, unless you're, like, in a private school or something. So. Anyway. I don't know. Lots of resources out there. Um, Fuck yeah. You can learn everything online now. Yep. How to bug out. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You can learn everything. Anything and everything you want to know about is online. That might actually be why schools are cutting resources, because they figure kids will learn it online eventually. That's the way it should be. Schools should be obsolete. Yeah. Physical schools. Other than other than high end high end technical training type places that require labs and things like that, but if it was all on the internet, then parents would have to one of them would have to stay home to teach the kids. It is all on the internet. I post it all the time. Two parent system. Twelve dozen places to educate yourself online for free. Yeah. Go to Code Academy. You can learn how to code websites for free. Yeah. Oh, that's MIT yeah. has everything they've got online for free. Yeah. That there's links to MIT in that link I just put in. Yeah. Oh yeah, Harvard has some classes on YouTube. Oh, there are all kinds. There's all kinds. Uh, Phoenix University, I think, has a lot of online resources. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff. Phoenix University, you too can be an electrician in only 18 weeks. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> I know, it doesn't take 18 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yep, get shocked a few times, you learn quick. <laughs> that's right, say, so here, grab these two wires. Okay, that's what you don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, that's everything you need to know about electricity. <laughs> Just charge this capacitor. Don't do that. <laughs> Always work with one hand oh. behind your back. Yep. No, I I got another question for Larry. Okay. Uh, well, it would only take so much time to do the actual building on this project, right? Yeah. Got a time frame. What What's the time frame from start to finish of actual labor? For the fifteen thousand acres? No, no, no. For the for the for the for the pilot. Village. Village. When are they? When are they wanting it done? Months. He said he wouldn't do it till after the lockdown crap is finished. Yeah. Right. But from that point, how long would it take to actually make it physically possible? Uh, Between teaching them how to make the coils, them making the coils properly, getting the light poles set, wiring the houses. If it's only 20 houses, six months. Wow. Okay. This could be next year. Yeah. uh, Yeah, I'm going to do a prediction and figure that after the election, they'll free everybody for a while. 
to avoid any more conflict. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on just what Just in time. Yeah, and timing's good. Just or in, maybe the law time. before the election so that there won't be an election or like a real election. Yeah. Oh, there's no, never been a real election. What <laughs> planet are you living on? Fox, <laughs> come back to Earth. We <laughs> miss you. See, the, the shit show that was 2016, the majority of votes went towards Hillary Clinton, who stole her nomination, and then the Electoral College was just like, fuck America, and, and gave it to Trump. Yeah, Trump well, I survived the Nixon administration. Yeah. Top that. He was talking uh, to you. They all suck. <laughs> Top that. <laughs> no. Wow. Well, yeah. you had some good stuff to say. I can't, you know. Glad yeah. you were. Sh you showed up and tagged along with yeah, us. Yeah, it's, it's been nice having you along with us. Come along to the end of the show here, Rob. So I was just yeah. throwing a few ideas yeah. out there to you. Well, it sounds like you're going to be around for a while. So will we see you again? Yeah, I'll probably be here in Missouri for a bit. I don't know. I don't know how. Um, but All right. Yeah, will be around. You know about you know how to use IRC. I'm assuming. Um, every time I try to find an IRC client and ask for a bunch of information that I don't have about how to get into your channel, so I just don't know. Uh, just open up our well, You can go to reallibertymedia.com. Oh, yeah, you have one on your website. And there's, there, a, yeah. there's a web chat uh, on there, so you can get in there that way from anywhere. Hey, I knew something, Rob. Wow. Yeah, you did. You should yeah. that, was, that was weird. <laughs> Get it going. I'm, I'm usually the last, yeah, but I'm usually the last one to give advice on the internet. <laughs> well, you're welcome to come hang out anytime, Fox. And uh, I might go out to Oregon for a little bit and document the craziness, but I'll come right back. Yeah, that'd be cool. Just laid back here in the state. The other place I wanted to check out sometime someday would be like Ohio. I always like the way Columbus felt. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> you, you can go see Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. That's, that's, don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so mm -hmm. um, what do you say? What's that? Never mind. Who, who are you going to go see in, in Cincinnati? Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cincinnati. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that down there. It's all right. <laughs> oh, I think it's chatting. funny. He said I pronounced Rums incorrectly. All <laughs> 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 uh, joke inside everybody. <laughs> it's not like he listens. No, I I know. Well, it's kind of cool to be Iggy by by Rome. <laughs> Anyhow, I go on enough of that uh, channel politics bullshit. Uh, what you got else, Larry? Come on, give us some more. Uh, 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 electric trolley to power the place. Yeah. Uh, overhead trolley line. Are they uh, talking about that, or are you just... No, that's part of the project. It uh, is part of the project. Yeah, uh, they, they were going to put in a train system. And we talked them out of the train system and put in an electric trolley, uh, oh. electric buses that operate with an overhead rail, or an overhead hot wire. Okay. And that would simply put more power back into the more system load, yeah. as, they, as they move. Yeah. That would give the, pe the people absolutely free transportation to their jobs, saving another cost. Yeah. Uh, it's it's good. We've been talking about water purification. They've got a bunch of canals, yeah, uh, water purification and electric boats, so that the canals won't be full of oil slicks. Right. Uh, 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 we've talked about the musical note E that makes fish eat. 
Oh. Uh, yeah, the musical note E makes fish go into a feeding frenzy. Interesting. Uh, that that way you can fatten up your fish better. Uh, ozonating the water so that the fish will grow faster. Yeah. Uh, and you can use all that water out of the canals for irrigation, uh, which makes the plants grow better. Yeah. Uh, so much you can do with unlimited energy. The possibilities are endless. Absolutely. That's why we call our company Limitless Energy Technologies. I know. I get it. Yeah. It's right on the money. We, uh, there's Energy is limitless, and what you can do with it is limitless. It's crazy, yeah. It makes so many different things viable that we're not... People wouldn't have even thought to try before. Okay, why don't you mine for bitcoins? Because it costs too much for processing oh, yeah. power. Now yeah. that's free. Yeah. You just... Yeah, oh, gee, wow. Uh, you, just, you just opened up a can of worms right there. That's... <laughs> yep. Damn, uh, yeah. And uh, half the possibilities haven't even been thought of. Yeah. Yeah, if you can think about it, and it's electric, I can do it. Yeah. It's uh, pretty amazing, man. It's um, just new stuff. It, we, we've got a new kind of physics here. And it's not really new. It's just physics, the part of physics that nobody has ever thought about or, or used before. Yeah. And, and, the one, and the ones that have have gotten slapped down. Yeah. Like Tesla. Yeah. And, yeah. And numerous others before and after him. I'll probably die a poor man starving, but at least I've had fun along the way. Yeah, and you try to do something big and good for humanity. I'm greedy. Don't get me wrong about that. Yeah, I mean, but I don't have. Uh, there's there's plenty of money to be had. Mm-hmm. Just for anybody that gets into this. Any, you know, it's just uh, we got to be allowed to do it, not. Yeah, it's yeah. That that's the big deal, and that's that's the big. I think that's the big thing about what you're doing with with this project is this could open it up in a way that they can't put the lid back on. Yeah, yeah. That's Which what we're thinking. Goal. Yeah, and that's the primary goal is to get it out there where they can't deny it anymore. Yep. Da, 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 da. And there's thousands of people out there doing the same stuff we're doing, just a little bit different yeah. way. There's all kinds of different stuff going on. From it ain't from from, from, from uh, electromagnetics to to uh, high fuel carburetors to water uh, electrolysis to geet G. Whatever you call that, you got yeah. the, the Garrett Motors. The yeah. the uh, have you ever heard of the was it the Garrett Motor the Clem the Clem Motor? Oh yeah 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 the the it's a cone shaped cylinder it spins. It was originally the design the idea for the design came from a a, a tar machine. Um. The people, you know, the, the tar machines they have, the hot tar that they do the roofing with and stuff, they spray that shit. Yeah. It's a, it's a big machine. It's got a big cone-shaped cylinder in there, and it stirs this, this uh, keeps it liquid hot and stir it up and what have you, and under pressure. Yeah. It's a Schauberger thing. And they would shut the thing off, and it would keep running. <laughs> yeah. And so the guy figured out what was going on, and it's, it's a hydraulic self-contained system, but it supposedly would produce like 250 horsepower um, continuously. Anyway, there's so many different things, and they're all connected. <laughs> One way or another. Yeah, it's all connected. He was but, right. Yeah. So we are at the end of the show. Very nice to have you on with us, Fox. 
Thanks for uh, I'm full here. And uh, Larry, thank you as always for your contributions to everything that you're doing. Thank you. It's been fun again. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Good talking with everybody, Flash. Rob works. We will see everybody next week. Later, Gators. Peace. Bye.